my dear brothers and sisters, it's no surprise what the rhetoric and the context of today's khutbah and the following Friday's khutbah is going to be about. Obviously about fasting and the month of Ramadan. However, we want to shake up the feathers and enlighten you with some new dimensions, some new thinkings about the month of Ramadan and specifically about the pillar of Islam which is fasting. One question that I want to start with this conversation and I want you to go away and think about it deeply is the following. Many of us have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to experience the month of Ramadan numerous times. So the question that I ask myself first of all and everybody here is, are you a habitual faster or are you a conscious faster? I repeat that question. Are you a habitual faster or are you a conscious faster? This question is supposed to shake your thinking of how many months and months of Ramadan you've experienced and whether you just repeat the same thing over and over and over again. Although the acts of worship that we engage with, the festivities that come with the month of Ramadan are well known to everybody, a lot of us get into a sort of a robot, so an autopilot mode when it comes to the month of Ramadan. The month comes and goes and you experience it over and over and over without real change happening to your daily life for the rest of the year. And so this is a diagnostic question in, in essence, in that if you look back of the previous Ramadans that you've experienced and you are going to embark on repeating the same thing and no change has actually occurred in your daily life subsequently to the previous Ramadan, then you are by definition a habitual faster. Because in essence, fasting is a pillar doesn't restrict itself to just the month of Ramadan. One fundamental aspect of being a Muslim is to understand that the five pillars that our deen is built is based upon. The effects, the benefits, the learning, the wisdom that comes from them are not capsulated or restricted to a certain time. In essence, fasting is not a seasonal phenomenon. Yes, the time that it takes to execute is constrained from dawn till sunset, but the benefits of it, the changes that are supposed to be taking place inside of you that reflects in your daily life, is supposed to be an ongoing thing 24-7. If it wasn't, then fasting would not be a pillar. This great way of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for His creation, the perfect way of life for His creation, is 24-7. It's not just when you pray, it's not just when you fast, it's not just the month of Ramadan, it's not just when you go to Hajj and so on and so on. The learnings apply 24-7. So how come that when we go through the month of Ramadan and leave it, nothing changes? It's one reason is that we are habitual fasters. And we want to change that from now. We want to be conscious fasters and comprehend what we're trying to do. We want to comprehend what we're trying to change. We want to comprehend what we're trying to obtain from the month of Ramadan. And so that entails you to think, what are the purpose, or what is the purpose, or what are the purposes of the month of Ramadan? Before you jump and answer that question for yourself and think it's from the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'll leave that for the rest of the scholars, the, the list of the khutbahs that you'll hear for the month of Ramadan. I want to highlight a few other aspects. The first aspect I want to highlight is towards the end of the passage of the month of Ramadan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the passage by saying, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may gain taqwa. But he also ends the passage with another rhetorical question. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Now this lamb in Arabic, grammatical sense, is called lam al ta'lim which means it puts a question mark that some people may obtain taqwa and some people may not. Some people may obtain one of the purposes of Ramadan, which is shukr and gratitude, and some people may not. We don't want to be part of the group that may not. We don't want to be part of the group that Prophet Sallallahu has described as they go through the physical <coughs> tiredness of fasting and all they get is the tiredness from the lack of food and the lack of water. We don't want to be part of the group that stands up and prays up at night and all they get from that is a physical fatigue. 
as described by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't want to be part of that group. We want to be part of the group that obtains taqwa. We want to be part of the group that obtains gratitude. But you need to be consciously aware how we obtain that. The state of gratitude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completes and concludes the month of Ramadan with is highlighting a fundamental thing that Prophet wants to instill in every single believer. Every single believer by default needs to have fear of Allah and love of Allah. But the overriding principle is always the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of appreciation and gratitude. So the number one purpose I want to allude to today is the essence and the importance of gratitude in the mindset of a Muslim. We all know that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to pray at night until his heels would crack and bleed. So Aisha anha would ask him, O oh Prophet of Allah, why do you do that when your sins are forgiven? She's thinking and she's talking like us. We do worship, we go hard so our sins get forgiven. But that's only one aspect of it. That's only one aspect of it. The bigger aspect is the answer of Prophet Sallallahu to his beloved wife Aisha radiallahu anha. Where he says, Aisha, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا shakura." Shouldn't I be a grateful slave? With all the responsibilities that he had, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with all the troubles that he faced during the day, with all the pain and torture and harassment he faced from his native people of Mecca for the first 13 years. Yet his mindset is, despite all that, I'm always grateful. Why is that so important for a believer? Because to be in a state of gratitude, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the month of Ramadan with, you need to be constantly aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to be constantly aware, you have to be conscious of the gifts and bounty that is given you. <coughs> so that's why the khutbah starts with, are you a habitual faster or are you a conscious faster? Because if you're someone that just goes through the motion, you'll never be really aware of the gifts that Allah has given you. And in essence, you'll never reach the state of gratitude. Ever. Whereas if you are actually conscious and accounting for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, you will always be in a state of gratitude. And it is no coincidence that when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam G's up the Muslim community and wants to encourage them to fast, he says, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا Imanan wahtisaba. The word iman is there with belief, and the word ihtisab is the key word with conscious accountability. With what? Conscious accountability. Whoever fasts with iman and conscious accountability, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins. Whoever prays at night with iman, wahtisaba, the key word conscious accountability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins. You cannot go through the month of Ramadan by going through the motions. So that's why over the next 29, 30 days, your aim shouldn't be how many iftaris I get through, how many rak'at I get through. It's the conscious worship that you need to focus on. How can I maximize being conscious through all the acts of worship that I do, small or big, between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or between me and my fellow human beings? Consciously aware of what I'm doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The state of gratitude that you want to get for the month of Ramadan is very, very powerful. Because if a believer obtains the state of gratitude, there will be no room for depression and anxiety and all the modern day problems that, that are out there. We've explained numerous times that when the Muslim comprehends the state of gratitude, life's constant of challenges become small compared to the huge amount of favors that he has. So in life, there's no escaping that it's tough. It's no escaping that it's a series of challenges. You've got wife issues, you've got kids issues, you've got work issues, you've got family issues, this pressure, that pressure, it just doesn't stop. And whoever's looking for an easy life, then you're living in the wrong universe. Just because you're a believer, your life doesn't just become easy. This is a fixed constant in this universe. Life will be challenging. But that's only one side of the equation. On the other side, You've got the many, 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 many gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Look at everybody here right now. Your eyes are seeing, your ears are listening, your heart, your heart's pounding, your mind is, like, is absorbing the information, your digestive system is working, your blood is circulating, 
There are so many gifts that you are enjoying right now and you're not even aware of. When you consciously become aware of that, that big bucket on the right hand side, which is what Allah has given me, versus the small bucket on the left hand side, which is life's challenges, the big bucket of gratitude will always win. And when you are consciously aware of that, life with its challenges will always become something attainable, something manageable. But when a believer forgets about the, the abundance of the favors that Allah has and given them, and just focuses on life's issues, you become miserable. And that's what you see out there. People miserable, people depressed because they have forgotten what they have, the abundance of, and they just focus on the small number of challenges that they face. Whereas Prophet Sallallahu and he had more challenges than any of us had, despite all the challenges that he had, every night he would pray out of state of gratitude. So purpose number one of the month of Ramadan is obtain consciously the state of gratitude. Consciously account for how many favors that Allah has given you. The biggest favor is you are witnessing the month of Ramadan. The biggest favor is you are able to come to the masjid and, and, and enjoy this environment. Look at our brothers in Syria. Look at our brothers in Turkey. Look at the Muslims are priests all around the world. Never mind coming to the masjid. They don't have a roof over their head. Just thinking about them gives you a state of gratitude. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to switch on, to become conscious fasters, not habitual fasters, so we can maximize what we gain from this blessed month. Allahumma ameen. Astaghfirullah adhi wa lakum wa risala muslimin fa astaghfiru. Inna hu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kitha wa salatu wa salam ala ibadihi ladhina safa amma ba'd. So that was purpose number one that we want to enlighten our minds with. The state of gratitude that a Muslim must be conscious of all the time. That is one of the goals of fasting in the month of Ramadan, and it is one of the goals of fasting outside the month of Ramadan. The second amazing purpose that is to be obtained from fasting the month of Ramadan, and there are so many purposes, is highlighted in the second to last passage in the verse about the month of Ramadan, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Literal translation is, Allah wants ease for you, He does not want hardship for you. Now why I want to focus on this verse specifically, because this year, for the first time, we have 10 days in summertime fasting. It's an extra hour, people are finding it a bit more difficult, where the last 5 years we've been spoiled. You wake up, you just have your suhoor, you just skip lunch, you get home and it's a fun fun. So there's a sense of challenge this year, around for the first 10 days. But let me give you the perspective of why this extra level of difficulty is actually beneficial for you. In the history or the context of revealing the obligation of fasting to the Muslims, fasting was originally optional to Muslims. One or two days here and there. One or two days here and there, optional. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained that fasting becomes compulsory 29 to 30 days in the month of Ramadan, Linguistically, the word Rama in Arabic is when your tongue starts reaching for moisture because of the extreme heat. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it 29, 30 consecutive days in what is arguably the hottest time of the year in the Arabian Peninsula. And the first year that it was ordained upon the Muslims was the Battle of Badr. So superficially, the Muslims, you could say, theoretically went from easy to hard. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says... He wants ease for you, he doesn't want hardship for you. So what is the amazing phenomena that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alluding to here? The phenomena that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alluding here is one of the fixed principles in this universe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and declares in the Quran, Verily, you will not find any change to the principles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this universe. Some of these principles include, for example, the sun will rise from the east until the day of judgment. You know, you jump on the building, you're going to fall because of gravity. You need oxygen to breathe. You put your hands through fire, it will burn, except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will. Fixed principles. One of the fixed principles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alluding to here, which you get as a benefit from fasting, is that, oh, you who believe, if you want long term success, if you want long term gains, if you want long-term ease, then you got to understand, you got to go through some hard, difficult times at the start. 
And you've got to be patient and you've got to be disciplined to consistently go through that tough period to get that long-term change. Why is that so profound in modern day times? Because in modern day times, everything is about instant gratification. Everybody wants a shortcut to achieve their goal. Yeah, she have, we want a shortcut to Jannah. How do we get to Jannah quickly? We want a shortcut in diet. We want to get fit quickly. You want to get healthy quickly. You want to get you want to solve everything in life quickly, quickly, quickly. Which in essence highlights the fundamental predisposition of a human being. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khulq al insan ajula. Human beings have been created in a state of haste. But we are wiser because of the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by putting you through this exercise, whether you realize it or not, psychologically you start to make a change. And that change we can all testify to, that sweet taste of iman that comes towards the end of the month of Ramadan. And then when the month of Ramadan disappears and everybody called turkeys because you don't have a maintenance dose, you drop. But to get long-term change, long-term success in this life, in whatever avenue, spiritually with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a family man, career man, education, health, you have to go through the hard yards consistently at the start. Let's give it to you in a business example. Which one of us thinks that to have a successful business, I'll just open the shop and I'll work 9 to 5 and do no marketing and the customers will come through the door? No one. Anybody who starts a business from themselves will pull on the hard yards and will work extra hours, sometimes unpaid, months and months and months, and then the business starts to build itself up. And then you have to maintain and react to the market and adapt and this and that to maintain the positive income coming through the business. The same principle applies in everything. You have to go through the hard yards at the start. You have to be disciplined. You have to be continuous in order to get the long-term change. And the continuity is the important thing. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What he took me to Remarkable is the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to, he could have made fasting three days every month. Over 12 months. You still get the same number of days, roughly, but you won't get the continuity of going 25, 20, uh, 29 to 30 days in a row. And it is that continuity, that example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you psychologically, that leads to the long term change. And in essence, your life as a human being from birth to death is a small challenge compared to the eternal hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reinforcing and reminding you of this reality. Oh, you human being, in this month of Ramadan, you're going to demonstrate to yourself that Allah is Akbar and you're going to persevere for 29, 30 days doing what I told you to do. And in essence, you demonstrate to yourself that you can do it, and you can extrapolate it to the rest of your life. But how can you persevere and be consistent and disciplined for the rest of your life is when you realize the bigger long-term success of the hereafter. So if you persevere and have discipline and consistency doing what Allah wants you to do in this life, you will get the long-term success. If you can't be bothered, if you want quick fix, if you want a YOLO lifestyle, up to you, go for it. But all of us understand that those that go for a quick fix, whether it's spiritually, whether it's education, whether it's career, whether it's business, you're just setting yourself up for doom. You'll never succeed on the long run. You might have short bursts of happiness at the start, yes. You might fool yourself at the start, yes. But we all know and we all understand in the long run, you're setting yourself up to fail. These were just two examples out of so many purposes that come from the month of Ramadan. But you can only understand comprehend and apply them into your life if you're consciously engaged with the book of Allah. If you consciously engage with the gift that is the month of Ramadan. So go away and start to consciously engage and question yourself. What am I actually doing in this Ramadan? Am I just going to repeat the same rhetoric that I've done for the last so many years? Or am I going to actually consciously try and get something that will lead to long-term change? It is really up to you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go out and and keep us on the straight path, Allahumma ameen. Inna Allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma salli al-islam al-muslimin. Wa izz al-islam al-muslimin. Allahumma ajalna mimman yastami'una al-qawla fa yattabi'una ahsana. Allahumma wafiqna an nasuma ramadhan. Allahumma wafiqna an nasuma ramadhan. Allahumma wafiqna an nasuma ramadhan. 
ونقوم لليالي رمضان ايمانا واحتسابا خالصا لوجه وجهك الكريم اللهم امين هل جزاء الاحسان الا الاحسان